So our next so, speaker is going to be Barbara Jones from IBM Research on Dynamics of Viral Evolution and Mutations, a study of viruses in and around cells. Barbara, take it away. Okay, so um, I would like, uh, oops, uh, let's go back to the, yes. So um, the first thing is to show that um, um, this, this slide that I have to show, basically it says that, you know, working on this now, but it doesn't mean that we're always going to be working on it. Okay, now, um, uh, this is a, uh, in itself, an abstraction of how viruses enter cells and uh, reproduce and then exit. But uh, I'm going to be going through it first. There are particles, the viruses that uh, try to enter cells. If they succeed, then they try to reproduce and they have to use the genetic material of the cell to reproduce. If they do reproduce, then the progeny uh, basically burst the cell and um, the cell is um, destroyed and then the viruses escape. Well, while, however, the virus is in the cell, um, the immune system can sense it and uh, can destroy the cell with the virus along with it. Um, and so we we're interested in the inter if if there is a, a way to model the interaction, uh, not only in the cell, but also in um, the bloodstream around the cell, and um, is the diversity in the bloodstream um, the same as in the cell, and the the density, the viral load, the same as in the bloodstream as in the cell, and then later, if I have time, I will also be talking about. Um, some work we've done with uh, Rochester Institute of Technology about um, uh, adding uh, viral therapeutics to this model and to see uh, how this changes. So here's our abstraction of the abstraction that I showed you. We have a model in which there are viruses in the environment. With some probability, they um, enter the cell. Where, when they're in the cell, there is a probability for the virus to be um, destroyed by the immune system. And then if it survives that process, there's a probability for um, the cells, uh, the, the viruses to escape with a fecundity. And, um, and so uh, the, uh, the process for the virus entering the cell is one in which we imagine the virus to have 100 um, spots on it that are the region that it will show to the cell. The cell has 50, um, and each of these uh, locations have be between A through Z, we put in these spots, and they correspond to different amino acids. Um, you might say, well, 26 is more than the current number of amino acids, and uh, this this was uh, model was um, uh, devised in in collaboration with um, virologists and um, one of the virologists at the time said, well, you know that it, it's only that that number that has been um, uh, found today. There may be more in the future, so we'll have twenty six for this one. Anyway, the virus in this model rolls itself or tries different alignments of its 100 with the 50 of the uh, virus uh, of the uh, cell and um, the alignment with the maximal number of matches to the cell. So the cells are all fixed and they have- uh, Barbara, uh, just one sec. Uh, did you change your slide? Because I don't see the numbers on the slide you have uh, in, in case they're supposed to be there. Did I- did, Sorry, the, the slide the slide which we are seeing is doesn't have any numbers on it. The numbers you're talking about are 26 amino acids. Are we supposed uh, uh, to be seeing another slide? Ah, uh, no. I I in order to make a slide which is a, a talk which is one. Uh, oh, then it's fine. No, 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 no worries. I've taken no. out some. If people okay. would like to see this written down, no, 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 so no, no worries. No worries. To the to this. Yeah, and yeah. If no, that's, would that's like okay. I was just confirming this. I will do it. No, thank you for mentioning that in case others were thinking the same thing, right? Thank you for, for bringing it up. So um, the, the virus 
um, uh, uh, it, it, there's the cell and the virus um, shot, tries different alignments of the virus with the cell of its 100 to the 50. So there are then 51 different alignments of the virus with the cell. And the alignment with the greatest match of the virus to the fixed uh, um, 50 on the cell. And this, the 50 on the cell would be something like, you know, the letters, uh, this is the, the cell pattern that is this for the cell or so, you know, it's, it's, it's some fixed uh, letters and they have some repetition as, as was shown with, with uh, that example. And also not all the letters of the alphabet appear in the cells pattern. And then the maximal alignment of the virus with the cell, that number of matches, we call the number of matches for that virus. And that number of matches is the label in our model for this virus. Different viruses have different numbers of matches. And so that we group the viruses by how many matches they have to the cell. And so they can have between zero and 50 matches to the cell. Then the number of mismatches is 50 minus the number of matches. And that is what the term number of mismatches in the slide that you're looking at um, refers to. It's 50 minus the number of matches, where the number of matches is the matches for the al uh, optimal alignment of the virus, well, optimal for the point of view of the virus, of course, uh, of, of, of the virus with the cell. And um, the probability to enter is then a recursive um, process of viruses in the environment, one by one, trying to enter the cell and either succeeding with a probability, which is um, as shown e to the minus number of matches over a, a parameter, which is the cell permissivity, or if they don't succeed, then they go into the environment, uh, back into the environment. Um, the immune response is a sigmoidal, and um, uh, with a small number of matches, for a small number, uh, a, a small response for a small number of matches, and around six matches, a rapid rise to a large uh, number of uh, uh, a large response for a large number of matches. And um, here you see the the uh, 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 trade offs for the virus that. Um, uh, if it has a large number of matches, it more easily enters and le and reproduces, uh, infects and reproduces. However, if 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 it has a large number of matches, it ha will have been seen by the by the system before, be in the memory, and be more likely to be uh, um, uh, destroyed along with the cell. So um, then the, the probability for, uh, there's a probability for reproduction and we take the, the kind of DB to be, to be 20. And then this process of reproduction, uh, of infection from the environment, immune clearance of some of the cells with the viruses and reproduction is then um, a, 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 a iterative process. And we iterate this um, with a, cer a certain large number of cells and a larger number of viruses, we iterate this until steady state. And we do find that, except in a very small number of cases, this model does go to a steady state, a different one for every value of the immunity and the uh, cell permissivity. And so I would like to tell you about the process of the dynamics to the steady state and also um, what we get at the steady state. We call every one of these um, loop one time step. And this corresponds for viruses to anywhere between half a day and a day. Okay, the first I'd like to point out is it, at steady state, it turns out that we see a phase transition in the average number of matches. So uh, the viruses form quasi-species naturally in this model. 
And so the um, very quickly, even if you enter with just a single, start the iterations with just a single type of virus, um, they quickly spread into a, um, a quasi-species of a width of about um, 10 or so um, uh, viruses around a center. It's a more or less Gaussian shape that it forms. Uh, likewise, if you start with a completely uniform distribution, it's still within a few iterations forms a quasi-species and not a broad distribution. So one can well define a, um, an average for this quasi-species distribution. And if one then plots for every cell, forget this per temperature, cell permissivity, think of it that as cell permissivity versus immunity, we find uh, basically um, three different um, phases in terms of the uh, average number of, of batches in the steady state. And um, uh, with uh, phase transitions um, between them that vary from first order to second order. And um, as the uh, transition goes to the uh, higher um, uh, cell permissivity, um, uh, higher order. Um, uh, as I said, the viruses naturally form quasi-species distributions in this model. And the phase transition broadly separates viruses into two types of strategies. Those with a strong match to the cell, these reproduce easily, but are subject to immune predation. We call this, these type of viruses acute. Um, and those with very few matches, which hide from the cell, from the, hide in the cell from the immunity, but once in the cell can survive very well. So we have, we have the option in this model, there's only a probability to reproduce. The cells can, the viruses can stay in the cell for uh, one or more iterations. And um, uh, these, uh, which we call chronic, um, these type of um, diseases, they, they have a low match number. They, they hide from the immunity, um, but they, they can thrive. So um, this is a, like a difference between influenza or COVID type um, diseases in the acute phases versus chickenpox which can become many years later, show up as shingles in the chronic. And uh, this in a way fits system biology views that this expansion rate of a species overall abundance can be maximized by a bet hedging strategy in which the population constantly diversifies into subpopulations of fast growing and better surviving individuals. So I would like to now tell you some more about these phases. So here we have the phases labeled with the acute um, uh, appearing for all uh, immunity levels, um, the chronic appearing for the somewhat um, higher uh, uh, cell permissivity uh, regions, and um, then an opportunistic phase, which is the smallest phase of the model where it, it appears uh, for um, the very lowest immunity. This, these are the, the viral diseases that appear uh, for people who have compromised immunity. We also see bistability along parts of the phase line. And um, this bistability appears in those parts of the phase um, uh, that is the first order phase transition. And um, the, we do see some regions in which in steady state, the uh, immunity manages to um, kill all the viruses and the viruses become extinct. And um, this region is shown with the excess in the, in the model. And so uh, the viral load is typically measured in the bloodstream and is a kind of a density of viruses that uh, are, are at any given time in the bloodstream of the um, system. And then we, but in our model, we can measure the viral load both in the bloodstream and in the cells. And the first point we want to make is we'll be fine very much so that the viral load in the bloodstream and in the cells is not the same. And we also, I also would like to point out that in the cells, which is the, uh, the image on the right, um, it is a strong, especially in the um, uh, acute type phase, which is below the horizontal phase line, um, it is a strong function of immunity for the viral filling of the cells. 
Uh, we also wanted to look at um, mutation and how the viral distribution changes with time. And um, the, this is a plot, a superimposed plot over many iterations of the viral quasi-species for a number of different cell permissivities and immunities. And you can see that um, for some, for the region, for instance, the chronic region, there is very little um, change of the viral distributions over time. But um, with the, especially in the opportunistic phase, but also notably in the acute phase, which again are these diseases such as the flu and COVID, there is a large amount of, in fact, the very largest amount of um, viral mutation over the course of the um, uh, disease, as it were, uh, and um, especially near the phase transition, and especially uh, for those with lowered immunity. And you can see that um, from the spread of the quasi-species over time, the shift of them. Um, there is evidence of, of a glassy type critical slowing down at the transition. Um, we, at the phase transition line, we, this is a, a blow up of a, a region. This is not a full cell per, permissivity uh, range, but um, uh, a section of it blown up for clarity that um, we get some uh, 100,000 iterations required for convergence along the line. Elsewhere on the phase diagram, we can get convergence with a few thousand. But it's interesting that the, uh, uh, Iterations to steady state mirror the phase boundaries and phases um, in, in a lot of details, in, including the horizontal um, uh, phase line and its turn uh, upward to, to more a vertical line, um, as we see. Um, the uh, large number of iterations to steady state um, that is seen for uh, very, the very lowest immunity, you might see that small yellow region. That is the one region that we find where we do not get to a steady state. This is a cyclical state that um, alternates between iterations um, with uh, one cell population to another, one viral load to another, but that's the only place we do not see a, um, uh, a steady state, and the, even that is a dynamic uh, steady state that I described. So what if we now add viral therapeutics to this model? To see the effect of a viral therapeutic, we wait until iteration 10. And uh, in other words, this waiting is uh, the, the person getting the virus and then getting to the point that they feel sick enough that they go to a doctor and ask for some treatment and the doctor gives them the therapeutic. The individual in the model then keeps it in our modeling, keeps taking it then for a constant dose. And the question is, can the virus be dri driven to extinction at, or at least to very low levels? And we are for this model of the therapeutic, we're gonna focus just on the COVID-like virus region, the so-called acute region of our phase diagram. The therapeutics are of three main types, limiting viral cell infection capability, viral reproduction capability, and viral fecundity. We look at the, uh, so this is a redrawing of that same uh, uh, phase diagram that I showed before with the three phases. And um, this is the baseline again with no therapeutic, just drawn with a different color scheme. And you'll see four, rectangles drawn, superimposed on this phase diagram. These are the four regions that we take for our initial conditions on the flu COVID phase space. We have three varying immunity and one quite near the phase transition. So first we change fecundity. Remember that we start with a fecundity of 20. And then as we move the fecundity down, what we see is that um, it, these plots are, are as a function of um, therapeutic. It lowers the immunity. So if you see what's being plotted is actually F naught minus F. So as the therapeutic has increased, the viral load in the bloodstream decreases linearly. The viral load in the cells um, uh, is constant for a while and then uh, collapses. And so, 
um, for um, different levels of, for different immunities, which are the four points um, that I show, it takes different amounts of the therapeutic for the um, uh, virus to have a, a, um, a, 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 an extinction. And for some of the lower immunities, it takes a very large dose uh, indeed. But at least it is linear in the uh, bloodstream for the changing the fecundity. If we go to changing the viral reproduction uh, uh, ability instead, um, then the if you look at the far right, the um, region of extinction of the virus has grown. Um, and um, the uh, change is not linear with fecundity as it was with fecundity, but it's still driven extinct by enough dosage in much the same way. Uh, there's a slight curvature, especially for the lowest immunity. For the low immunity, this dosage actually needs to be extremely large. As you see, the um, uh, this is the red curve, um, which is the lowest immunity the uh, viral reproduction almost needs to be completely shut down in order to uh, make it go extinct. Uh, and then finally, changing the viral infection rate, um, it has a surprising result. It is highly ineffective for low, too low a dose. The therapeutic actually increases the viral load. You see the plot on the far left. Uh, as a function of viral dose, the viral load is increasing. Um, and we also see uh, uh, virus is mutating to resist the therapeutic, especially for lower immunity individuals. And um, here on the uh, right is shown the um, phase diagram for a few values of the um, therapeutic. And you see that in fact, um, the phase diagram itself is changing with this um, uh, therapeutic changing the viral infection rate. Um, whereas before we could see the horizontal line and the uh, if you want to call it turquoise or light blue, depending on your screen and how you see that color, um, it was well in the phase transition. It is um, the phase transition has left it behind, and it is um, uh, uh, fully in the in the um, acute phase. Um, and so, focusing on this, the viruses. The reason for this is the viruses can reproduce, but they can't infect. And so at first they empty out the cells and only after the cells are empty does the viral population go extinct. And such a large buildup of viral load would cause a large immune reaction in the patient as this is what seems clinically. And the strong indication that giving too little of this viral therapeutic has a worse effect than giving none at all. Both for the patient, they get worse, but also for the community because the virus mutates. Um, and then finally we, Point, look at the time dependence. Now the x-axis here is time um, of the viral population in the bloodstream, which is the dark blue, and virus in, in, in the cells, which is the light green. And um, the far the, the left of the two columns is the higher immunity. And you can see for high immunity individuals, the therapeutics work well. The virus is extinguished both in the bloodstream and in the cells very quickly. But for those with uh, on the right column, A equal 0.2 only, for those with weakened immunity, the drop in the bloodstream is also fast for therapeutics affecting uh, fecundity and um, reproduction rate, which is the blue, you see it's dropping. You see though for the um, uh, therapeutics affecting um, infection, you can see that the uh, both the viral load in the cells and the um, uh, bloodstream is, is, is recovering. Um, however, there is a large, a very long time scale for the population in the cells to resolve for all three therapeutics. So all three therapeutics, um, the, 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 uh, for those with a weakened immunity, there is a very long time scale, the green, much longer than the blood. And so that tests for the virus using a blood test only would miss this. It would seem as if the virus has um, become or been removed from the body when in fact, um, these viruses are staying in the cells a long time. 
Um, and we wonder, is this in fact um, in our model a sign of what could, one way of causing uh, long COVID? And also, of course, as I've mentioned, the high immune reaction. So um, our model is lifelike in the sense that it gives some of the features of real cells and their interactions. It's certainly modular and easy to be modified. We can model tens of thousands of cells and viruses on a life-size scale. We focus on COVID-like viruses in the study for the therapeutics. Um, and we have two, three different kinds of therapeutics. We have infection reproduction of fecundity. We find fecundity and reproduction are good areas for the therapeutic because there's a strong and predictable effect. Viruses are cleared, but however, for the um, infection, um, it seems to be counterindicated. Without a massive dose, the risks are increasing the virus in the blood, worsening the infection. What is more mutate? I haven't shown this, but I can. Mutations are caused in the virus quasi species, which would increase the mutations in community. Um, if for all the types of therapeutics, we see um, that viruses are cleared from the blood but have very long residence in the cells. And as I've mentioned, is this a source for long COVID? And it's certainly a source for a potential immune response storm because the cells are signaling for such a long time and so strongly. And then finally, for discussion, I want to um, put up another uh, more broader issue. What does it mean to be driven into the chronic phase, crossing the phase line from acute? Um, that would be an increase in cell permissivity caused by long-term exposure. And, and uh, what would that mean in this model and in general? So thank you very much. I want to stop here while there's still some minutes left for questions. Thank you so much, Barbara. That was fascinating. Um... So folks, please type your questions in the chat for Barbara. Uh, is there, uh, it's interesting that, uh, you know, both, this was totally unplanned, but there are interesting parallels between the two talks. Uh, and so- Yes, uh, <laughs> I was fascinated by the first talk for that reason too, yes. So uh, I was just wondering, actually just going from inspired by Sid's talk a little bit to you, Barbara, uh, did you also, since you have a quasi-species model, you could actually look at heterogeneity is of the viral population. Did you look at the relation between heterogeneity and both reproduction and what happens when you give therapeutics? Um, that is something that is, is based on Sid's talk. Uh, I plan to do. In, in our model, that would be characterized by the width of the, of the quasi-species distribution. Right. And um, so uh, typically we just see it as, you know, but we haven't actually measured it. And if it, it, it certainly doesn't vary, you know, all over the place, but mm -hmm. whether it goes from even 10 to 20, that would be a factor of two. And that would be something actually that we have not looked at yet. And I've made mm -hmm. a note that, that, that based on Sid's talk, that's something um, to look at. Uh, but as I said, it, it's not as if it goes and as as with mm -hmm. with the the tumors and and Sid's talk, where it just explodes in in um, um, the the the, the dif different types. This one is already spread over some types, and what it does instead is it tends to more mutate and then have um, you know uh, um, the quasi species goes you know so that that is the way over time that the viruses in this model show their heterogeneity. They are able to, they mutate in time uh, to all different species. And we see this, of course, with viruses like the flu and COVID, where there's a large number of mutations over time. Mm 